And Elder Jay walks into my office, and he says... Basketball? Yes, Brother Jay. On behalf of myself, and on behalf of the Church's Board of Elders, I'd like to take a moment and reflect on your sermon. Go ahead, Brother Jay. You've been a long-time family friend, trusted confidant, and spiritual mentor. And I just want you to know that I think this new direction you're taking us is very exciting. It's, uh, you called it a radical change, and it's an important change, I think, for the longer life of our church and for the life of our faith. The church board and I, we discussed the sermon, your message, and they also find it very interesting, uh, very progressive, what you're doing here. So you're saying you're behind me? Yes. You support me? Yes, absolutely. Along with the board of this church. Yes. Well, thank you. But. Oh, there's a but. It's just as we're celebrating this new exciting direction for our church community. Uh, I'll be honest, we're really broken up about Joshua leaving this church. Yes, I know. For the past five years, he's been a blessing to our family. You do agree that he's been a blessing? In many ways, yes. You've even said yourself that Josh was your spiritual son, that you saved him, that he walked into this church lonely and just looking for some friends. I seem to remember that he was thrown out of his house, I forget what, some sort of family problems. And I remember that boy came down to the altar saying, I need something. I don't know what, but I need something to help me to keep on going on. That young man started coming to church every Sunday. Then every Sunday, Wednesday, then Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Friday, every day of the week. And bit by bit, you started getting into more responsibilities here at the church. A uh, Sunday school class, then counseling responsibilities, the prayer line, here and there, Bible reading, a testimonial in the Sunday service. And then you hired him on as an associate pastor. And you'll agree, he worked hard. He did. He was honest. He Good. Yes, he this is scouted, true, Brother Jay. He organized and revitalized our youth ministry. Uh, you cannot deny he is very charismatic and gets folks excited about our church and the work it does. He became an outspoken member of the community, going and reaching out to the poor, the sick, the disenfranchised, and the lost. Uh, so, what I'm getting at is. Did you have to be so quick to let him know? Did you have to, need to? Was it absolutely necessary to cut him off? While he may have failed to follow you this time, yes, he failed, he's young. Sure, he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Still, isn't there room for a second chance? And a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. Your sermon talked about being more accepting, and so shouldn't the same acceptance be extended to Joshua? No, I'm going to stop talking and let you speak. Thank you for that, Brother Jay. I hear you. You, you know, it's kind of like a marriage. Huh? In, a Bible, in the Bible, uh, the marriage talks about you need to be, uh, you can't be unequally yoked. A divided head cannot lead. I welcome Joshua into this church, but if he is going to lead it with me, under me, in any way, then we need to be of one mind. You talk about Joshua reaching out, being the face of this church out there in the world. True, he does do that. But what does he show the world about this church? How does he represent us? Do you know how he represents us? I know he can be very passionate. <laughs> Last November. Right. You heard about this? I, I think I did. Associate Pastor Ken came to me and told me how Joshua had gotten together with some of the college kids. Yes, I know. Saturday this. nights, a group of five or six, they go downtown, go up to people, call them out of synergy, right where the bars are, the clubs. They go up to people <laughs> and tell people that they were going to hell. Tell them. It was inappropriate. What do you think it makes people feel when they pull aside and told that they're sinners? We're people all sinners, say, aren't we? You're bad. You're a bad person, and you should feel bad about yourself. Why do thieves hang out with thieves? So they don't feel so guilty all the time. But shouldn't it be a church that makes a thief feel welcome? I don't disagree. But then we have Joshua here and a group of college kids going up to people, calling them out of sinners, and the world looks back at us and they ask, who is responsible for spreading around all that contempt? That's what it is, really. And the world looks back at us, and the world looks back at me, me, and they say, he is responsible for that 
And I don't want to be responsible for that. That's suffering. What good is a good church if all it does is make people feel so bad? Yes. But what good is a church if no one goes to? Only 50 people left. Joshua was very popular. He had a different kind of relationship with the congregation than you. Not better, just different. You're so busy running this church, writing your sermons, or for singing, all sorts of... And I understand that's hard, but that meant Joshua was the one who people came to, who listened on a daily basis to their problems. Uh, he was the one who people had a, a more personal relationship with. And again, you're busy. You can't be blamed. I just think that carries a certain weight. I think that Joshua served a very important function, and without well, you him, think. yes, or the board think. I'm just here to let you know their concerns. I need you to let the board know that there's nothing to be concerned about. We can't afford a schism. Afford? Yes. Well, now you're talking about money. Among other things. And the church has paid its debt. Only to incur another. And you and the board worry about the business of the church so that I don't have to. Well, you say that, Paul, but you, you have a board, a group of <laughs> people who really like you a lot and care about you and your ministry and your family and who wouldn't be serving unless they cared about you. And keep in mind, we're, we're not business minded. I mean, I'm a doctor. I give up flu shots. Jerry, our treasurer, runs a local telemarketing firm. And we have no prior experience running something on this scale. This church, you understand, it's a massive corporation and for the past several years while the church was in debt, that was scary, for sure. And in the middle of it all, when Agnes got caught on the church escalator, got her leg all cut up, turns out the board of directors was personally liable and we had to avoid this. We're in a position where we do have our necks on the line in a way that you don't, you understand? I do. <laughs> but at the same time, we had a congregation that was here every Sunday. That was growing exponentially, and so slowly but surely the place got paid off. I worry. Yes, I, I do worry a little about what happens when you tell a congregation that they don't need to believe. Then I have to wonder if that makes them feel like going to church isn't so important. So would you have me threaten them? No. Would you have me tell them that if they don't come to church, they're going to hell? No. Would you have me tell them that if they don't tithe every week, they'll burn? No, of course not. Then what would you have me say that I'm not already saying? 